Good morning to you all. Good to greet you and welcome you on this very special day um, for us as a core fellowship as we welcome Major Helen Schofield as our new core officer. Um, we have prayed for you, Helen, and we look forward to this new chapter in the history of our core fellowship here at Govan. We also greet our new divisional commander, Major Janet Robson, as she leads our worship. You'll be glad to hear there's not too many announcements this morning. Um, Fiona, Sarah and Lauren travelled to Territorial Music School in London yesterday and we pray for them this coming week. And our own divisional summer school at Strathallan School, Perth, commences on Saturday the 5th of August. And again, we pray for those young people who will be attending and also those who support as staff members. Just in connection to our own summer school, the midweek showcase will be held on Wednesday the 9th of August at half past seven and tickets priced five pounds can be purchased at the door. And the final showcase is a little different and it's on Saturday the 12th of August from one o'clock until four o'clock. And this will be a celebration of our young people including music, sport, creative arts and of course, some food and again tickets priced five pounds can be purchased at the door and both of these events are actually at Strathallan. As a core family we congratulate Hannah and Ross who are here this morning and they will celebrate their marriage at Paisley Salvation Army on Thursday the 3rd of August at one o'clock and we pray God's blessing on them. We bring before God many situations and people who need our prayerful support just now Robin Hay is now home from hospital and we pray for his continued recovery. Alison Gillespie is also recovering at home following surgery and there are others that I know are undergoing treatment and who have health concerns and we pray for them and their families during these difficult days. Charlie's not too well just now and we do remember him in prayer but it is good to have Margaret Gibb worshipping with us this morning. You have been missed, Margaret. I was sorry to hear that our former Corps officer, Major Chris Connolly, is in hospital and our thoughts and prayers are with him and with Linda just now. And I would ask that you continue to remember all those who are unable to worship with us as they would wish to and for Maisie, Jessie and Sandra in their care homes. We have much to be thankful for, haven't we? And I would ask that you pray for our continued mission and ministry in this community of Govan. And finally, these beautiful flowers on our holiness table have been placed there by Joan in memory of Stephen, who is also much missed here as part of our fellowship. Now, last week, if you remember, um, we were talking about things that are precious to us, things that we want to hold on to. And Ruth was talking about her Kids Alive newspaper collection. So Ruth, come up here very quickly. because I knew everybody would want to know. So Ruth, you were talking about your kids alive and you've been collecting them since 2019. I feel like we should have a drum, drum roll. Where's the drummer? Can we get a drum roll, please? <laughs> okay. Ruth, how many kids alive have you collected since 20, uh, 2019? 123. 123. That's, that's not including today's one. Is it 124 from today? There you go. You heard it here first. Thank you so much, Ruth. Well done. And now let's just put our hands together and welcome Helen and um, Janet as they lead our worship this morning. Thank you. Thank you, friends. It's great to be with you on this significant day in the life of the core and this community here in Govan. And it's great that you're here to welcome your new core <coughs> officer. And we'll be hearing from Helen later on um, in the meeting and uh, we'll have opportunity to get to know her a little bit. I'm going to ask her a few questions and uh, we'll, we'll just get a sense of uh, who she is and uh, the things that she's passionate about. We begin this meeting 
this time of sharing together as we bring our love and our lives to the God we love and serve, to the God who loves us and is with us this morning. One of the things I really appreciate about the current Salvation Army songbook is that there's a verse of scripture uh, associated with each of the songs in the songbook. And in a moment we're going to sing um, song number 89, Oh for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise. And the verse of scripture noted for this song is found in Revelation chapter 5, verse 11. And it says this, and I'm reading from the Living Bible. Then in my vision, I heard the singing of millions of angels surrounding the throne and the living beings and the elders. And then into verse 12, this is what they were singing. The lamb is worthy. The lamb who was slain. He is worthy to receive the power, the riches, the wisdom, the strength, the honor, and the glory, and the blessing. Well, I appreciate there aren't millions of us here this morning. There's a good number, not millions. I don't know how angelic you're feeling this morning, but we're going to have a go at raising our voices and uh, as we bring our love and our lives to our Redeemer. So let's stand, and the band are going to help us, and we'll sing the four verses straight through. Thank you.
you please do be seated. Let's pray together. The Lamb is worthy, the Lamb who was slain. He is worthy to receive the power and the riches and the wisdom and the strength and the honour and the glory and the blessing. Jesus, our Lamb, we come to you this morning. We bring our love, we bring our lives, we bring our worship, and we thank you for who you are. Father, thank you that you are with us this morning on this special day. Thank you that you're with Helen today and that you will be with her in the days to come as she steps into this new season in her life. And Father, for all of us this morning, we want to step into whatever you intend for us to receive this morning as we're together. Father, I thank you for every person in this room just now. I thank you for every person who might watch this later on at some point. And we just come to you and pray that your will would be done, that your kingdom would come and that your name would be hallowed in this place and in our lives. We do pray, Father, for those who uh, need an extra measure of your grace and your love today, whoever they are, wherever they are. Father, be near them. Help them to know your love for them this day. And for us, Lord, as we continue in our worship, by your spirit, would you just enable us to know your heart, to hear your voice, and to respond to all that you long for us to receive from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I think the musical tots have got something prepared for us and they're going to come and share that with us now. Can we just encourage them as they come to the platform, please? Just while they make their way down the stairs, it's been lovely to be able to keep the musical tots going over the summer. And we thank everybody uh, for helping us and volunteering some of their time uh, to make sure that this community project continues. Today, we are going to sing two songs for you. We are going to sing uh, one about clapping our hands and stamping our feet. And we are going to sing one of the songs that has always been a feature of musical tots ever since its creation, I suppose, uh, Baby Samba. And so hopefully if you know the songs or you'd like to sing along, please feel free to join in. And hopefully the musical talks will come and join us <laughs> sometime soon. <laughs>
We thank the Musical Tots for their contribution this morning. It's my turn now, to, or the YP's turn, to welcome, say words of welcome to Major Helen. So I would like to ask as many of our young people that have been pre-warned, so if they could all come down and join me down here, please, that would be great. Okay, so today we have been asked to give some words of welcome to Major Helen. Now, I'm not sure, I know for about the last 10 years you've lived in London, I think, so probably coming from London up to Scotland is quite a change in itself, and then coming to Glasgow and Govan, um, again, a wee bit different from central London, I don't know what to say about that, but we'll maybe come back to that again. <laughs> so... I thought that we would share some things that we like or know about Scotland and Glasgow. So first of all, what is something that you love about Scotland? Um, I think we're a good nation and we've got good music like Amy MacDonald. Okay. <laughs> Just the views. We like. Yeah, I was going to say the scenery as well. <laughs> the wildlife. The Highlands. Highlands. Uh, the people. Oh. Tap water. Tap water. Probably <laughs> is <laughs> true. Probably quite bet a lot better than London water. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the lack of poisonous spiders. Lack of poisonous spiders. Okay. <laughs> okay. So thinking a little bit. That Scotland is the country. We're now thinking a little bit more about coming closer to home. Something that you like or love about Glasgow? The, the places you can go and visit. Okay. The parks. Parks. The shops. Shops. Anybody else want to add to that? Any adults want to add to that? Clay River. Museums, <laughs> lots of things. So here's our last one, coming to here as our core in Govan. Something that you love or like about our church here in Govan? They, they accept anyone, doesn't matter what they are or if they're disabled or anything. Anybody else? The people. They're not normally as quiet as this. <laughs> <laughs> just the fact that you can just worship. Okay. Anybody else? Friends. 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 Anybody else want to add to that? Accessibility. Accessibility. Music. Anybody else? As I've already said, this week saw Major Helen move up from London. Not sure what her feelings are and probably a little bit mixed, leaving what she's familiar with and coming to something which is a bit unknown. But hopefully we will get to know, you will get to know the country of Scotland and Glasgow and Govan a bit better soon and feel that this is your home. Scotland is often one of the people's favorite countries to visit. People come from all over the world to Scotland whether it is looking for something from history, something to do with the countryside, wildlife, or the bustling culinary scene that you might find within Scotland. Scotland has many amazing facts, such as the official animal of Scotland is a unicorn. I don't know if everybody knew that or not. It is known for its natural beauty with many mountains, lochs, and has also contains an extinct volcano. Glasgow is Scotland's largest city, based on the River Clyde, and is famous for its unique art, architecture, and culture. And some of the kids mentioned some of the museums and things that you can visit within Glasgow. 
Govan is a riverside town which is known for its shipbuilding, although that is probably not as prominent today as it once was. It's the home of Glasgow Rangers Football Club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hometown of um, football manager Sir Alex Ferguson. Rabsey Nisbet, which is probably a bit old now, but that was all filmed in Govan, and nowadays is known very much for its multicultural and diverse community. From some of these things that our people have shared today, a number of these things, a number of things come to mind related to Glasgow and Scotland. I don't know, you'll probably get to know us a bit more, but there's many different places that you can find that are interesting, lots of places to visit. We have our own language, and I don't know if you might not always understand what we're saying, <laughs> but hopefully you'll get to, know us, get to know it soon. We have lots of different foods, which have its own unique taste, such as haggis, or something maybe a little bit nicer and tastier, as such as shortbread or tablet. All of these things today are things which are important to us, and things that make us love the place that we live. We would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our church. We are looking forward to getting to know you and you getting to know us and hope that some of the things mentioned today you will get to experience and become to love too. Please accept this little bag of goodies. Some of the things have been mentioned already, I'll let you taste them um, as a little welcome to Govan. I'd like to just share some words of scripture with you as I finish. <laughs> Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, I say this because I know what plans I have planned for you, says the Lord. I have good plans for you. I don't plan to hurt you. I plan to give you hope and a good future. And Deuteronomy 31 verse 8 says, The Lord himself will go before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forget you. Don't be afraid don't worry. God always knows what he is doing. Things will work out with him in charge. And maybe at the, this time, things maybe seem a little, unsh you're maybe a little unsure and unsettled, but I'm sure that God is with you. He has great plans for us as a core in the future, and we look forward to working together with you and seeing what God, God has planned for each one of us and as a wider core. Thank you to the, the YP call for that lovely welcome. I did not know that the unicorn was a national animal of Scotland. I thought it might be in a haggis, but it's a unicorn. So I've learned something this morning. And um, we're really excited because the Sing Company are going to sing a really powerful song that speaks about a lovely promise for all of us, how we're kept under the wings of God. So the Sing Company are going to bring their ministry to us just now. Thank you.
sing company for that powerful reminder this morning. We're going to sing again in a moment or two. We're going to sing, Lord, I come before your throne of grace. I wonder how you are approaching Jesus this morning. I wonder what your expectations and hopes are this morning as we're together in this place, as we bring our worship to Jesus, as we come to this throne of grace. It's an interesting phrase, isn't it? The throne of grace. Um, Helen was commissioned as an officer a number of years ago now, and um, her sessional name is the Ambassadors of Grace. I wonder what you are hoping to find as you come before the throne of grace this morning. The second line of this song offers us some encouragement on that. I find rest in your presence and fullness of joy. Let's stand and sing these powerful words of testimony this morning. And after we've sung, um, someone from the community team will share some words of welcome to Helen. Thank you. Good morning, Helen. Today I have been asked to give an overview on the community work that's taking place within the core, how it started and where we find ourselves now. The first project to start 13 plus years ago is the Open Door. And that came about because someone's son got stuck in a snowdrift and he was supplied with hot drink by a local in the area, while his mum was sitting on a sun lounger in Tenerife. A discussion took place that maybe there were folks back in Govan who could be doing with a hot drink and some soup. And the idea to open the back door of the hall and to serve hot soup and drink began. We sat it on the first night with tea and coffee, chocolate biscuits from a donation from a family member, but no one came. And the officer at the time told us we were wasting our time. But we persevered. 
then someone had an idea to open the front door and that is when we realised that the building next to us was a resettlement service for women and it was one of the girls passing that night and then they brought others and some of whom are sitting in our meeting today. It was an exciting time for us and Jim MacDonald walked faithfully around Govan with his high bid vest on promoting the project and our chaplain for the team, Ruth Topping, was always in hand with, with a word of encouragement, whether it was for a volunteer who had ha heard a disturbing story or one of the folks who had came for food. And this was a very important for us, to be able to share and pray at the end of each Friday. Because in these small beginnings, we now serve 40 plus meals on a Friday night with additional takeaway goodies from our local Greggs that is collected at close of business for us by Gordon and also the goods from Costco that are very much appreciated. It's not been easy and we've met many challenges but if ever we were in doubt that there was a right way for us it came one Sunday when the girls from the hostel were needing underwear and it's agreed that someone would go to Primark and spend £60. The £60 was a lot of money 13 years ago, but it was felt that it was needed. On the Sunday morning, a member of the church was handed a jar of money. The exact amount in that jar of money was £60. This was God's confirmation of what we were doing was right, and that belief has never wavered. Only a week ago, I spoke to one of the men that comes regularly, and he told me that when he first came, his glass was half empty. But through the open door contacts, he feels that is now half full. There are many stories that I could stand here and tell you, from going to funerals to praying with folk in the hospital as they were so ill after drinking moonshine that someone had made for them. But we'll save them for another day. The second thing that started was the musical talks on the 11th of the 11th, 2011. When God planted an idea in one of our young mum's heads that there were lots of new families moving into the then new houses facing the hall and we were placed to welcome babies and toddlers. The officer was consulted and an appeal was made for volunteers. To start with, it was slow with only one mum and, and her child along with the leader's young children. But in the January of 2012, more and more families came and joined. Posters within the local community, a large banner on the side of the building promoted the project, and mums and tots from all walks of life came, and through this a cooking class in conjunction with the National Health Service Healthy Lifestyle was also introduced. As many exciting things have taken place and many contacts made through the musical tots, at the moment, it runs on a Tuesday with the same structure as it started, with the numbers as 20 plus children every week. And there has been contact with over 100 families since the restart after COVID. Links with social and health visitors are key and have been since the commencement. And volunteers are young mums and young at heart folks from within the core who have these precious youngsters at heart. A Wednesday night craft class was commenced to encourage anyone within the core of the community to come and enjoy fellowship. And this offer was taken up by many of the girls from the hostel next door and friendships were established that are still in place today. And to be able to test their skills and many lovely things have been produced, especially for sale at Christmas fairs. The Thursday night feeding programme was introduced by taking the then emergency vehicle to Govan Cross every week with different volunteers each week in teams of three or four. And the food given out was provided by Greg's shop in Govan. This was very popular, even when it was raining or snowing. Folks still came for hot soup, hot drinks and takeaway. Unfortunately, that van eventually gave up the ghost and a new emergency vehicle was purchased from DHQ but it was felt that it was not viable for us to be using it, disappointing the teams that were out in the street meeting the people. And when we returned to the refurbished building, this project has carried on from the door of the building. And again, 30 to 40 people come every week and take away hot soup, 
hot food and all the goodies that we received from Greg's and Costco. Line dancing was introduced to encourage folk to meet up and enjoy fellowship, not something that I attended, but I'm led to believe it was a lot of fun with many laughs. And this was attended by members within our core and family members. Unfortunately, this has not continued due to the leader being ill, but we never know what the future holds. So don't put away your cowboy boots. Or cowboy hats, ladies and gentlemen, you never know. A seniors lunch was commenced to allow folks to one, enjoy a lovely meal and fellowship, which is important for folks who live in their own. And through the winter, some days, some folks who attend our residents in the housing association flats next to the building with our own core folk and folks from local churches. Many exciting things have taken place within the community and one of them was the Christmas lunch on Christmas Day where many of our open door and thirsty folks have attended in recent years. The work in our community is so important and the support from the folks within this core has been phenomenal. Yes, the store has been, and is at the moment, low in stock, but we never, never have had to say to anyone, we have nothing to give. The work during the pandemic will surely, will surely have a place in the Coven Core Church History Book, as it was God's love in action. The contacts that were made during the lockdown with Govan Housing Association, Prince of Wales Hospice, Ross Hill High School, Govan Rotary and all the volunteers who came to work in the food van in support with any demands that arose. Thanks to the hospice kitchen, we were able to provide very nice hot meals, lasagna was very popular, every day in different locations within the Govan Lent House area. The Housing Association requested 100 food parcels per week for tenants who were unable to leave the house. And thanks to Ross Hall High School and the Salvation Army Distribution Centre in Cumbernauld, we are able to facilitate this as well as having the van at Govan Cross every Thursday night and a Friday night located outside the church that we were working from. Due to the renovations of this building again, providing a hot, hot takeaway meal and food parcels. Many people stepped up during the lockdown period to support this work. With Mark and Tracy's leadership, that emergency vehicle was on its last legs, but it really did play a major part in the work that we were able to do until this building was fit for us to move into. All this work, I believe, is God's plan, and I am in no doubt he will continue to provide for it. Thank you. And then we can move it. Thanks, Helena. It's exciting to get a sense of the ministry that's happening um, in this community. Thank you for sharing that with us. And we're going to continue, please, in our worship as we give together in the offering.
Thank you for that beautiful music that enhanced our worship. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you that on this very significant day for our church that we're able to come into your house to worship you. And we give back to you now with our tithes and our offerings. We place them before you and ask you to accept our giving, to bless our giving, and to guide us to use it wisely in order that more people learn of your amazing love more people will come into our church and more people will be here praising you. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And the songsters are going to offer their ministry just now.
Good morning. The trouble with being the last to give um, thank, uh, welcomes, thank yous, welcomes, is uh, usually everybody else has uh, stolen your thunder. So, apologies uh, for. Uh, <coughs> but I do count it an honour uh, to stand here this morning representing uh, each one of you and re representing our corps as we do give a warm welcome to our new commanding officer, Major Helen Schofield. It has been six years since we've had to have Sunday worship like this and a lot has happened in those six years. So much change, whether it be changes to the fabric of our building or when we look around us, new people arriving to worship with us and become members of our core, or sadly those who no longer are with us. We give thanks and rejoice because God continues to place opportunities in front of us as we look to develop our mission and ministry. So Major Helen Schofield, we welcome you to Govan Salvation Army Community Church. In fact, today we also welcome you to the new Central and Southern Scotland Division, a division so vast that our divisional leader, Major Janet Robson, has had to trade in her car for a hot helicopter. <laughs> <coughs> and at this moment, I want to acknowledge uh, the massive responsibility that you now, you now have, Janet, and reassure you of our continued support from our core here, both practically and, more importantly, through prayer. But today is all about our core and about you, Major Helen. Come, coming from your responsibility as Territorial Youth Secretary, a role I know you loved, we welcome you back to core life, and we welcome you into our core family here in Govan. Of course, there are going to be many changes for you personally as you readjust into a new environment and a new culture. And amongst all the challenges you may, fa you may face in this transition, we can promise you many good things too. We can promise you some fine dining with some of the finest restaurants and menus to sample, Seafood, haggis, neeps and tatties, Stornoway black pudding, Cullen skink, stovies, and the finest Highland spring water. And that's before you get to taste the pizza crunch supper with a deep fried Mars bar for dessert and washed down with a can of iron brew. We can promise you some breathtaking places to see, some of the, some of the most beautiful beaches to be able to dip your toe into crystal clear water although we advise you to go no further, as you will feel, lose the feeling in any part of your body <laughs> that come, comes into contact with these icy shores. Beautiful walks in and around our land, giving some of the most picturesque scenery you will have ever seen. And many incredible walks, as we believe you are fond of walking, and recently embarked on a little saunter through Spain. We can promise you some interesting people and a few characters along the way, and that's only the Pastoral Care Council. <laughs> Gallus and always up for a good time, Glaswegians cert certainly know how to make each other laugh, but it can also be some of the most understanding and caring people you may meet. A place where very often a spade is called a spade, and there is no fear in knowing exactly what is being said and where you stand. We can promise you some variable weather, here in the west of Scotland, where we can experience all four seasons within a day, sometimes within a couple of hours. Uh, always travel with your sliders, some comfy shoes, walking boots, and a pair of wellies in tow. Your Factor 50 should be in your bag alongside your umbrella. And never, never be far away from a woolly jumper. In all serious, seriousness, though, you're arrive, arriving into a community that is vibrant, diverse, and has a lot of exciting things happening. However, there are many challenges, an area with high, level of, high levels of poverty, and like so many other districts, serious concerns for mental health and substance abuse. My thoughts are drawn to the writing of Paul, and particularly his letter of encouragement to the church in Ephesus, where he wrote these words. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and this inc incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked not only in the present age, 
but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. We believe we are a chosen people, chosen by God to do his work in the communities we serve, whether that be in the town of Govan where we worship or in the local communities where we live. There is a need for people to know that they are loved and there is hope, hope that can be found through knowing the love of Jesus. Major Helen, I don't have a bag of goodies, but I do bring this bag of goodies. I commend to you, I commend to you every local officer, every senior soldier, adherent, junior soldier and friend associated with Govan Salvation Army Community Church through our varied programme. A church which works hard to be light in what can be sometimes a very dark world. We know you have been sent by God to journey with us as we continue to offer the hope that Jesus brings to support us and strengthen us through your ministry, giving us the desire to do more in his name, to love God, to love others, and to love each other. So as we witness your appointment this morning, we acknowledge that God has already gone before us and has prepared the way for all that is to happen. Major Helen Schofield, this morning we welcome you to our church and into our church family. May God richly bless you in all you do in his name. Thank you, David. In a moment or two, I'm going to interview Helen and just fire a few questions at her that she has had prior um, notice of. But um, I want to share some scripture that Helen has chosen for us this morning, and it's the first four verses of Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to, pro to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting for the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Amen. So, Helen, come and join me. Oh, you're getting your own mic, that's good. So first question is, please can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, I've been warned that I, I can only speak for a little bit. That's been the warning about this. Okay, so I was born in Nottingham, a little town called Beeston. Um, I went to a Salvation Army there, a tiny little Salvation Army. Uh, but I, when is my teens moved to a corps called Nottingham Arnold, and um, that's probably where my faith developed. And um, I have, I'm one of four, I'm the youngest of four. And uh, there's always a note about being the youngest, isn't it? Good place to be. <laughs> I could tell you lots more, but you're going to have to wait. <laughs> okay, how did you first come into contact with the Salvation Army? Okay, yeah, so I come from a non-Salvation Army family. The lady over the road gathered up the children on the street and walked us to Sunday school. And, and from there I stayed. At the age of 11, my friends left, but the officer's daughter uh, was my age. She was my friend, and I thought she'd be lonely. So I felt I should stay and um, stay with her. Here you are. And here I am. How old were you when you first sensed that God was calling you to service as a Salvation Army officer? I was probably um, around 17, 18 when I felt this conviction upon my life um, that this is what God wanted for me. Um, I struggled for only about six months. That was quite short, really. Some people struggle for years, don't they? But um, I just felt probably too convicted and said yes. I'm glad you did. 
And Helen, where's your officership journey taken you so far? Okay, yeah, so um, for the training college, I went to Bristol, and um, I was in two appointments there. I was a core officer at Bristol South Corps on a very tough outer city estate. And I was also the associate officer at Bristol Citadel Corps, again in a quite a tough area in the middle of Bristol. So that was quite challenging. From there, I went to Western Supermare. Um, and from there, I went to divisional headquarters as the DY and the candidates officer. From there, I went to the candidates unit and then to territorial headquarters as the territorial youth and children's secretary. Don't forget the children, okay? And um, I've been in that role now for seven, I was in that role for seven years. Helen, what's been the greatest joy for you in your life as an officer? Oh, there's been many, many joys, but I think for me the greatest joy is actually seeing how people have, in, have took hold of the will of God or listened out for the will of God and embraced it wholeheartedly. So whether that's been young adults, whether that's been children, youth, grown-ups, um, I suppose my particular joy is seeing young people that I've seen, seen grow up, I suppose. Um, I think of youngsters at Bristol Citadel. One of them's now the, the DY <laughs> in that division. And that brings me great joy, seeing how God has been at work in, in their lives. And the greatest challenge? Oh, um, I think probably when I was appointed as the, the, the TY, uh, because at the point I was appointed, it was fit for mission. We'd gone through all of these changes, and I was suddenly uh, appointed as the Territorial Youth and Children's Secretary. It was the amalgamation of the youth and children's units. They had actually been decimated. I will use that word. Um, they were very small, and there's a lot of hurting people around. And I felt like I was probably building a new business. There was no systems or processes well, it didn't feel like there was that were in place. And suddenly you had to cast a new vision and dream and see where we're going. So that moment was full of, yes, challenges. It was also actually seven years of amazing blessing of God just again, just building something new mm. out of what had taken place. Helen, we know that in recent months you've had the lovely opportunity to have a sabbatical. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about that, please? Yeah, I, I would say it's a real gift, sabbatical, that the Salvation Army, thankfully, as I've introduced for officers. And um, I, I could talk a long time, you said a little bit. Um, my sabbatical, you haven't got a long time. I know. My sabbatical was dominated <laughs> by a little walk, as has been referred to. I walked what's called the Camino de Santiago, which is a pilgrimage route that takes you over northern Spain. And it was approximately 500 miles. A cue for a song. A cue for a song, indeed. And the song certainly was on the playlist that my team had put together for me for that walk. But it was amazing to have that space to walk. It was a real challenge physically. Northern Spain is stunning. I'd never, ever done anything like that before, to consistently walk day after day after day, um, full of blessing, full of challenge, but was great. And, but I'm promising not to talk about Camino, okay, in my sermons. It would be good fundraiser if everyone had to give a pound every time Helen says, when I did the Camino, um, but we'll see, we'll see. Helen, in a moment or two, um, I'm going to ask you to introduce the next song that we're going to sing together and to share why this song has become so meaningful for you recently. But before we do that, can you share with us, how can we be praying for you? Yeah, it's, it's already been referred to. It's a massive time of change for, for me personally. Um, and, and there's so many things going on. Sunset, somebody sent me a little message naming all the changes that were happening. And that message itself was overwhelming. Um, but I think just in the midst of change and transition, which I'm personally going through, but you also as, as a core fellowship are going through, it's just really praying that um, in the midst of all this, just knowing God intimately that in the everyday that I, I'm tuned in to, to, to what he's saying. As I've, I've took time to walk around this community a couple of times already, but trying to listen to what he's about, seeing where he's already at work, and just in the midst of all, everything's so different, but actually God is the same. And that would be my prayer, that I keep experiencing our all-sufficient, faithful God in the midst of all this. Yeah, thank you. Final question. We're going to sing, I Know Thee Who Thou Art. Yeah. Why is that kind of really resonate with you at the moment? Okay, so 
when you go on sabbatical, you don't, can't just go and go on sabbatical, you have to apply for one. And in that, I, I wrote in my sabbatical application, I want to do pilgrimage, whether if circumstances change, it might be in the UK, but I named that I was going to do Camino. And my rationale was, or I, my reasoning was, God and I are going to go on, on a walk and have a chat. Thankfully, Albert Osborne words it far better uh, than Helen Schofield can word it. And the, the third verse of that song speaks about, it says this, it says, Beside thee as I walk, I will delight in thee, in sweet communion talk of all thou art to me. The beauty of thy face behold, and know thy mercies manifold. And for me, this was my verse to, to walk with, of delighting in God, but actually knowing that God also delights in me. Yeah. And it featured very much in, in that walk. But it isn't just for that walk, is it? We delight in God every day, and God delights in us. And that's a real message all of us um, have, to, have to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's a cue for the song. We're going to stand together, please, and we're going to sing, I Know Thee Who Thou Art. Thank you. Please do be seated. As we move into the installation ceremony, um, these are really significant moments in the history of this call and in our lives as we share these moments together. The significant moments in the life of your new core officer, Helen, as she continues to offer herself 
in obedience to the call of Jesus on her life. Our flag is included in this ceremony as a visual representation of all that we love and long for in God. God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Helen, child of God, lover of Jesus, ambassador of grace, soldier and officer in this movement of God called the Salvation Army, as you commence your appointment as the leader of the Govan Corps, we greet you and receive you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You were called by God to proclaim the gospel of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ as an officer of the Salvation Army and have made a covenant promise to God. I remind you this morning of the words of your officer covenant. To love and serve him supremely all your days. To live, to win souls and make their salvation the first purpose of your life. To care for the poor, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, love the unloved and befriend those who have no friends. To maintain the doctrines and principles of the Salvation Army and by God's grace to prove yourself a worthy officer. As you begin your ministry here, we are all reminded that you're to serve the whole district in where you are appointed. You're to work with this, this Salvationist community in searching out and standing alongside the poor and the weak, the sick and lonely, and those who are oppressed and powerless, reaching into the forgotten corners of this community that the love of God may be made visible. You are to lead and share in the pastoral ministry of the core and in the leading of God's people in worship. You are to accompany those searching for faith and to seek to bring them to a knowledge of the saving love of God in Christ and his call on their lives into active and committed discipleship. You are to seek nourishment from the scriptures and study them with God's people so that the whole Salvationist community grows in holiness and grace, being encouraged and equipped to live out the gospel in the world. As a community of God's people, we claim the promise and challenge of scripture for you. Three readings, 2 Peter 1 verse 3. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life, through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. 1 Thessalonians 5.24 The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Matthew 5 verse 16 from The Voice You are like that illuminating light. Let your light shine everywhere you go that you may illumine creation so that men, women, boys and girls everywhere, everywhere may see your good actions may see creation at its fullest, may see your devotion to Jesus and may turn and praise your Father in heaven because of it. Helen, as you are appointed as the leader of this corps, you stand in front of the Salvation Army flag, a symbol of our love and longing for God, a symbol of the unconditional love of God the Father, the saving love of Jesus and the empowering love of the Holy Spirit. Before you are representatives of the Salvationist community as a reminder of your pastoral responsibilities. It is here that you will share from the word of God and here that you will encourage people to meet with God at the mercy seat, bringing their love and their lives to Jesus. Do you promise to be a true pastor and teacher to those entrusted to your care? Do you promise to speak, preach and teach the word of God? I promise. Do you promise to direct your energies to the saving and discipling of people? I promise. Do you promise to be true to the doctrines and principles of the Salvation Army? I promise. On behalf of the Territorial Commander, I receive your promises and install you as the Corps Officer 
of Govan Corps and charge you to be faithful to the promises you have made this day. I invite you all please to stand. I call upon this congregation of Salvationists and friends to affirm your love for Jesus Christ, your loyalty to your new leader and your commitment to the mission of the Salvation Army. Last weekend, we celebrated the ordination and commissioning of the Reflectors of Holiness session. As part of that very special day, the Territorial Commander, Commissioner Anthony Cottrell, reminded the Corps who were privileged to be receiving a new Lieutenant as their Corps officer of their responsibility to look after and care for their officer. Whilst Helen certainly isn't a new Lieutenant, I offer the same encouragement and challenge to you this morning to look after and care for your Corps officer. Commissioner Keith is going to come and lead a prayer just now. Thank you, Commissioner. Loving God, we come before you now to make our prayers in the name of our living Lord Jesus Christ. Many times we have gathered in this place and felt ourselves to be on holy ground, but perhaps never more so than now, for these are deeply holy and sacred moments. We come to thank you for your servant, Helen, who stands before you and this congregation today in willing and cheerful obedience to your call and to your will. We thank you for the rich and varied mosaic of her life which brings her to this moment of dedication and commitment. And we thank you for the way in which you have prepared her for such a time as this. We praise you for her experience of your saving grace. We praise you for her acceptance of your call to ministry and service as a Salvation Army officer. We praise you for her unique personality and for her natural and spiritual gifts which we know are wholly dedicated to you. And we praise you for the sacrificial gift of her availability to do the work of your kingdom among this congregation and in this community of Govan. As she stands before you now, we pray that your Holy Spirit will anoint her for the task that now unfolds before her. May that anointing give her an overwhelming sense of the rightness of this appointment. May that anointing give her physical strength for the demands of ministry. And may that anointing give her spiritual strength for the demands of ministry. And we pray that your Holy Spirit will grant her wisdom, discernment, compassion, courage and vision to lead your people here in the way you want us to go. We pray that you will bless us, the fellowship of your people, the body of Christ, here at Govan Salvation Army Community Church. Bless us with open hearts so that we will enthusiastically accept the leadership of Major Helen and respond to it. May she feel the love in our hearts and may she sense our passionate desire to move forward in faith to present the radical, life-changing message of the Gospel of Jesus to this locality. Under her leadership and ministry, please prepare us to be risk takers for the sake of the gospel and your kingdom. Prepare us, we pray, to receive the men and women and young people who will, we believe will come into this fellowship under her ministry. Prepare us for even greater things than we have ever experienced before. So, Lord, please hear our prayers this morning 
Set the seal of your spirit on Major Helen, on her commitment and on her ministry and service in this place. Here may she be a true ambassador of grace. And will you make of this day an everlasting sign? And we offer all these prayers in faith and in the powerful name of our living and reigning Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, please welcome your new Corps Officer, Helen. Just before Helen shares God's word with us this morning, the band are going to offer their ministry just now playing music associated with a simple, powerful prayer. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Before we listen to the band, I, I just encourage you not to be a spectator as we listen, or as we are reminded of this prayer. We pray this prayer for Helen, but let's pray this prayer for ourselves too, that in this place, at this time, as we're together in worship, that the spirit of the living God would fall afresh on our lives. Thank you. Amen. What a beautiful piece of music. Uh, just really bringing us again into the presence of God. Thank you, Ben, for that. Thank you for your welcome. Um, I feel quite overwhelmed. So many beautiful um, sentiments. I just feel very blessed. Um, I want to thank Mark and Tracy for all their preparation for me coming. It's really important what, what they've done and, and we pray God's blessing upon them as they have gone off to France and, and they're making a new home at this time. But I really just want to publicly acknowledge all that they've done in, in preparation for me to come here. Uh, but thank you. Thank you for all the kind words. I was a little bit nervous that there might have been some hard questions. I do understand that Mark got asked about his hair um, on his welcome Sunday, and if he sort of blue dry it. Just let you know, I occasionally blow dry mine, straighten it, or put it up. Just, just get that fact out there. But so thank you. There weren't too many, you know, hard questions for me to answer. Um, 
to be more serious, I, I'm a, well, hair is really serious, actually. But, um, but it's this of coming together, joining in in mission, isn't it? We join together in the mission of God um, in these days. Um, the reading that we heard from Isaiah 61, also if you were to look in Luke 4, you'll see that Jesus refers to it there. So just imagine the scene, okay? So we're going to go to that Luke 4 uh, passage just for a moment. Imagine this scene. The day when Jesus walked back into his hometown of Nazareth. Previously, if you were to look in the scripture, for 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus had endured the mental physical and spiritual intensity of the temptations in the wilderness and now he'd spent his recent days moving in the power of the spirit which we have um, amazingly obviously not amazing because it's about God but the power of the spirit to the region of Galilee teaching in the synagogues where he was warmly received the scripture tells us everyone praised him he was Joseph's boy that's what people knew him as and now he was walking the same streets with no doubt, where no doubt he had played as a child. And now on this Sabbath, naturally, he was heading for the synagogue. And after the prayers of adoration, confession, intercession had been made, and everyone like waited in anticipation. And Jesus rose and he stood at the reading desk on the raised platform. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. To the expectant silence, he read and spoke words of prophecy and personal testimony. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And carefully, slowly, he rolled the ancient scroll and gave it back to the attendant. The people didn't know what might happen or be said next. And no one could take their eyes off him as purposefully Jesus returned to his place and sat down. Then he breathed in and said words which, when the implications were understood, rocketed Nazareth that day. He, says, he said words that continued years later to reverberate around the world. Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Why though? Why did it rock Nazareth that day? Because quite simply, this son of a carpenter, this boy that they all knew, was actually nailing his colours to the mast and declaring that he was actually the long-awaited Messiah. Yes, I've just said the scripture that he quoted was Isaiah 61, which we heard earlier. And it's one of the prophecies in the Old Testament about the coming Messiah. And now Jesus was declaring it was he. Jesus knew clearly what his role was on earth. He knew what his mission statement was. And his whole life was a fulfillment of that. He fulfilled what his father wanted him to do. It's exciting, isn't it? He fulfilled what his father wanted him to do. Now I have to say that when I first received my appointment letter and then the profile for Govern, and then the next day when Mark sent through the headlines for the Missional Journal, I sensed that this Corps, this Govern Salvation Army, was declaring that they wanted to get involved with God's mission in this world that you were wanting to grapple with the big questions. You were wanting to wait on God to see what he required of you. And when you read the headlines around the mission priorities, around discipleship, community service, admin, pastoral care, leader development, events, communication, and also I'm then informed that a number of people want to get involved, have signed up to be involved in these different areas, it's exciting. It's exciting stuff, isn't it? And it's a real privilege for me. It's a real privilege to actually come and work alongside you in all of this. To come and work alongside you in all of this. Mission has been described as going into the world to find Jesus and point him out. And it's great, isn't it great to know that when we talk about mission, and it's a massive word that, quite frankly, not many people fully understand what it means, 
But actually, when we think about the communities where we are, that God is already at work in this world, is already at work in those places, those spaces that you occupy day by day, and our role is to point him out. It's helping other people see what God is already doing and discovering him in their own lives. And I have to say that when I think of mission like that, I breathe a sigh of relief, really, because it's not about me going, going to do mission, going to do these things, but it's about us pointing out God, uh, what God is already doing, and getting involved, and getting involved. The verses in Isaiah and Luke 4 really set out for me the type of ministry that God wants us to be involved in. It speaks about that Jesus preached the good news to the poor. It's our responsibility, isn't it? It's to share the good news. You know, that was what Jesus came up to, earth, to the earth to do. The gospel we know is good news. And Jesus came to share that message. Jesus' aim was never to exclude the rich, but rather to include the poor. To include the poor. In Luke's time, our status in the community may dictate whether or not we were poor. It wasn't just our financial situation. If we had any physical defect, our gender, the family heritage, all these would, could bar people from Jewish worship. Certain professions would be looked down upon. But Jesus was declaring that the normally excluded are now to be welcomed. Christ's gospel deals both with the practical needs, doesn't it, of the physically poor and how we respond, but also of spiritual hunger. Jesus speaks about um, freedom for prisoners. Now, he didn't go around, you know, Palestine or knocking the prison gates. That would have been quite foolish, wouldn't it? But actually, it was about where Jesus came to release people from the things that tied them up, that bind them up, that ensnared them that ensnared them, whether they were ensnared by a physicality, but actually about attitude and two. It speaks about actually giving sight to the blind. And we know that when we read the scripture, that's what Jesus did. Um, but there's more to this statement, isn't there? It's more about actually perhaps we all put up our blinkers, don't we, sometimes? No, I don't want to see it, I don't want to see it, don't tell me. If I don't see it, I don't have to know about it, that sort of thing. But actually, Jesus wants to remove those barriers that we put up, that present us from really seeing who he is. It speaks about, actually, the many people in life who are oppressed. We've heard reference to that as well this morning. But that oppression could be because of the land that they live in. Others are broken, aren't they? They're crushed, they're oppressed. But Jesus promises to uplift the spirits of people when they've hit rock bottom and actually come to the end of their tether. He also speaks about the year of the Lord's favour. He refers back to the year of Jubilee. It refers back to Hebrew law, which stated that every 50 years, slaves were released, property returned, and all debts would be cancelled. And Jesus proclaims this ongoing jubilee of forgiveness and deliverance for all who desire to be spiritually free. In Isaiah, the verses go on to say this. To comfort those who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion. To both bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendour. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ancient cities that have been devastated for generations. Now there's so much to unpack in those verses. You could do actually a whole sermon series on it and we don't obviously have time this morning. Time is gone. But if you think of that image, just take that image of bestowing a crown of beauty instead of ashes. I don't know how you visualise that in your mind, but for me, the image conjures up is one of a tender, loving father, gently removing those ashes and putting on this crown of beauty, gently removing the mourning, gently lifting despair and replacing it with, with his oil of gladness, his garment of praise. It, it's that image of like, you know, and someone's head's right down, but God gently raises their, their chin 
so they can stand tall and strong, knowing that they are a child of the king. Knowing they're a child of the king. They can stand tall and strong, a planting of the Lord for the display of his, his splendor. Uh, I've walked around this community just a, t a couple of times and only probably the tiniest amount of areas, really. I need someone to take me and, and go on a big journey around here. But I can imagine that actually there are people who need to hear that message. They need to hear that message, that they're a child of the king that actually the ashes, the downtroddenness that they're feeling, that God replaces. I can also imagine there are people in this congregation that need to hear that message too, that they are a child of the King, that they are loved by God, and they can stand tall and strong. And in fact, you see, when people's lives are transformed by the encounter with God, God takes hold of them, and uses them, perhaps in ways they could never imagine, rebuilding the ancient ruins, restoring places long devastated, and renewing the ruined cities. Used to be quite a sorry Shnami feature, that, didn't it? You know, I'm sure the founder says something about that. You know, when people get saved, you then put them to work. Um, could, we won't explore that at this moment. But it's this thing of God taking hold of a surrendered life and using it for his glory alone and the key to all of it is found at the beginning of the verses the spirit of the lord is on me because he he has anointed me if you to go back in in luke to luke 321 we we're reminded that the spirit came upon jesus and god said you are my son whom i love with you i am well pleased with you I am well pleased. It's a combination of the Spirit of God at work in our lives and known deeply that we're loved by God. And then this, this equips us for all that he calls us to do. For all he calls us to do. The Spirit of God at work in our lives. We're just going to spend just a couple of minutes in reflection um, and I'm going to use a song, it might, might be um, new to you, a beautiful song written by Graham Kedrick, The Spirit of the Lord is on me. I'm just going to ask for the music just to be played. If you know it, sing along. If you don't, just read the words and embrace them to your heart this morning. Thank you. Let's just hear that melody again and actually make these words your prayer that you want the Holy Spirit to come upon you now let's just hear, hear the melody and let's just make our quiet prayer on this Sunday thank you
Holy Spirit, I thank you that you equip us for all that you call us to do. And this morning, Lord, I just pray that in each of our hearts and lives, we know your power at work. We know your love at work. And we again offer ourselves afresh to you this day so we can do all that you ask of us. Father, I pray that if anybody just needs to be reminded that they are a child of a king, they're your child, I pray that you speak deep into their hearts this day and just remind them of that, Lord. Amen. 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 We're going to stand and sing our final song together. And um, in the songbook, it's 525, and it's the song, What a Lord, or, What a Work the Lord Has Done by His Saving Grace. It's all about Him, and it's all about His grace, isn't it? Let's sing this song straight through. Thank you. benediction let's share uh, the grace together the lord bless thee and keep thee the lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee the lord gift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace amen, amen.